Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Drosophila embryogenesis, uh, anterior and posterior patterning, and going over the maternal effect genes. So there are a few things that we need to define first before we jump into uh, the mRNA and the protein uh, gradients. So first, uh, the anterior of the body, that's going to be the front of the body where the head is formed. So in an embryo, that's going to be uh, over here. So we're usually going to be depicting the anterior uh, of an embryo on the left side, just by convention. And the posterior of an embryo is going to be where the rear of the body forms, or the hind of the Drosophila fly. Um, in terms of maternal effect genes, um, when a female Drosophila actually produces eggs, it has already laid down uh, mRNA that's localized to these poles. And then upon fertilization with male uh, sperm, that mRNA then gets translated to protein to, pro to establish these uh, concentration gradients, which will then define uh, how that specific segment is going to develop. Okay, so first uh, let's go into bicoid here. So bicoid mRNA is actually localized to the anterior end um, via anchor proteins. So on our graph here, you can actually see the, uh, the red bicoid mRNA. So uh, it has very high levels at the anterior end and then it sh sharply drops off because there's no gradation of that bicoid mRNA, okay? Uh, the bicoid protein, so this forms when the egg gets fertilized. It's the transcriptional activator of hunchback and it also represses caudal. And we're gonna talk about uh, these other genes as well later on. Um, so because of the fact that it's not localized uh, via anchor proteins like the mRNAs, you get this nice gradation being formed here, okay? So the pink is the protein and it's forming um, a gradation. You have a very high concentration of it at the anterior end and quite a low concentration of it at the posterior end, okay? So we really need bicoid um, for anterior patterning and proper head formation, all right? So continuing on with bicoid. So if we're looking at the embryo diagrams, as I mentioned before, uh, the bicoid mRNA is localized to the anterior end, okay? So if we're looking at the graph again, as I described before, it has a very high concentration at the anterior end and it drops off sharply um, as soon as you start entering sort of like the middle area of the embryo. And that's exactly what we see here in our embryo diagram. Okay, so the bicoid mRNA is very well localized to the uh, anterior portion of the embryo, the front of the embryo. Bicoid protein, on the other hand, actually forms a really nice uh, gradient. It's highly concentrated in the anterior end, but you get pretty much none of it in the posterior region, okay? So you get this nice gradation from anterior to posterior end, all right? Okay, so in terms of nanos, uh, the way that it's expressed and the gradations that are formed are actually quite similar to bicoid. Um, so nanos is responsible for the posterior patterning of the embryo, okay, versus bicoid, which was responsible for the anterior portion. So nanos will actually work together with caudal to determine the identity of each uh, segment of that embryo along the anterior posterior axes uh, using these concentration gradients that are formed um, when the proteins are translated. Um, so the primary function of nanos is to actually repress hunchback and we're going to talk about that gene as well next. So if you're looking at uh, nanos mRNA here, we actually have a very high concentration of it at the posterior end, okay? And then it sharply drops off again, and that's because it's also localized to the posterior end, just like how bicoid was localized to the anterior portion. And then when the egg gets fertilized, uh, you get this uh, mRNA being translated into protein, and you're forming this nice gradient here. So a very high concentration of it at the posterior end, and a low concentration of it at the anterior end. Okay, so as I mentioned before, nanos represses hunchback. So let's look at these two mRNA and protein expression graphs together. <clears throat> so again, uh, nanos mRNA is highly localized to the posterior portion of the embryo. Okay, so that's why we get that steep drop off as soon as we're moving away from the posterior end. But hunchback mRNA, if you notice, is actually quite consistent uh, throughout the embryo. Uh, it's not localized anywhere, so it's just got 
uh, very consistent levels from anterior to posterior, okay? So if we're looking over uh, at the protein graph here, we have Nano's protein in this light cyan turquoise here and Hunchback in the lime green, okay? So we know that Nano's represses Hunchback, so this should mean that at high levels of Nano's, we should see low levels of Hunchback, and that is what we see here. And that's also why we see this gradation of Hunchback forming, okay? So because here we have pretty much no nanos, we have a quite high level of hunchback. But as we move into the center uh, portion of the embryo and into the posterior area, we get more and more nanos. And that means that hunchback is going to start to get repressed. And that's why we see the uh, concentration of hunchback starting to fall off. All right. Okay, so if we're looking at the diagrams of the embryos, we can look at both the mRNA diagram and also the protein diagram. So let's start with the mRNA one. So in terms of the mRNA, again, uh, nanos is localized to the very posterior end via anchor proteins, but hunchback isn't. So that's why we see this um, the exact same shade of green all throughout the anterior to the posterior end. And this green should actually extend past this blue as well. Okay, it should extend all the way from anterior to posterior end for the hunchback mRNA. Uh, for nano's mRNA, it's completely localized to the posterior end, so that's why we only see this bit of dark blue just at the very uh, end of the embryo here. Okay, so if we move on to the protein um, diagram of the embryo here, we know that nano's represses hunchback, so uh, nano's is actually quite highly concentrated at the posterior end and it's moving into uh, the middle of the of uh, the embryo here, and hunchback is. Uh, concentrated at the anterior end because, uh, again, in the previous graph I had shown that there is not a lot of nanos protein at the anterior portion. So you get a quite a high concentration of hunchback because nanos isn't actually repressing the translation of hunchback mRNA into hunchback protein there. Okay, so hunchback can be made in the anterior end, but as it as you're moving into the center portion of the embryo here, you're, that's where you're starting to get this repression. And that's why we see these gradation effects here, okay? So the last gene that we're going to talk about is caudal. And caudal and bicoid share kind of a relationship that mirrors the relationship between nanos and hunchback. Um, the relationships that we just talked about in the previous uh, two slides. So caudal, um, if you notice, it actually it has a quite a consistent level uh, throughout the embryo, okay, uh, in terms of the mRNA levels, all right, it's this orange line here. In terms of bicoid, I had already shown this before, in the red uh, mRNA line here, we see that it sharply drops off as soon as we're moving away from the anterior portion, okay, and that's because of, again, these localization via anchor proteins, all right. So now let's move on to the protein portion, um, protein expression in the embryo here. So have bicoid here in sort of the pink, and then a uh, caudal protein is in the yellow. So uh, bicoid is tra uh, translated into protein, and it will diffuse uh, throughout the embryo. So we get um, high levels at the anterior end, and then low levels at the posterior end, okay? Uh, caudal has consistent levels uh, of mRNA throughout the embryo, but it's repressed by bicoid. So here, where there's basically no bicoid at the posterior region, um, because the, the diffusion hasn't actually reached it, um, it's going to be quite high levels of caudal protein at the posterior end. And then as it moves um, into the center portion and encounters more and more uh, bicoid, uh, it's actually going to be repressed. So bicoid is going to repress that translation of caudal protein uh, as soon as you're moving away from the posterior end. And then by the time you get to that, anterior uh, region of the embryo, you're basically not making any caudal protein at all, okay? All right, so we've discussed all four of these maternal affected genes, and uh, we've talked about both of them in mRNA and also protein. So you should be able to comfortably draw both the uh, mRNA graph and the protein graphs. Um, again, I'm just going to briefly go over each of these with you. So again, uh, the bicoid and nanos is localized uh, to anterior and posterior ends respectively. 
and the Hunchback and Coddle mRNAs, both of them have uh, pretty consistent levels from anterior to posterior, okay? In contrast to that, uh, Bicoid in this pink here and Nanos in this turquoise here has uh, high levels at the anterior and posterior ends respectively, but they diffuse, okay? So the levels get lower and lower as they reach uh, their opposite sides. In terms of hunchback in this lime green and caudal in this orange, orangish yellow here, uh, they also form a concentration gradient uh, due to being repressed by nanos and bicoid respectively, okay? So make sure that you're able to draw both of these graphs uh, comfortably and make sure you understand why uh, the gradients form, okay? So we're going to leave you with these two questions here to uh, kind of test your understanding and see if you understand uh, the purpose of uh, these maternal effect genes and their concentration gradients. Okay, the first question is, if bicoid is responsible for patterning of that interior end, what would you expect the phenotype of a bicoid mutant to be? And the second question is, suppose you have an embryo mutant for bicoid, uh, you attempt to rescue it by injecting cytoplasm from the anterior end, of a wild type embryo into the center segments of the mutant embryo. What's the result you would expect? So give those questions um, some thought and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.